The only constant in life is the manner in which you feed into what physically drives your physical self to push forward. It has to be. Everything around us changes. The stars, moon, and sun rotate around us every day, nonstop. The leaves change color, fall, and then new leaves emerge. Everything around us changes. But what's change? Is change a movement? If it is, is it physical or metaphorical? Is change evolving? If so, how and what counts as evolving? And once change occurs, what's left? Let's explore some different types, types of changes. Moths. If you're from the area, you might notice there's quite a lot of moths here. But how did these moths come to be? Well, like butterflies, these moths go through four different stages of, in life. Caterpillar, pupa, eggs, caterpillar, pupa, and the moth. Right before the pupa stage, these caterpillars eat a lot, of, to, be able to, eat a lot to be able to gather enough nutrients to construct their pupa. Now, this pupa will be the little caterpillar's home for some days. After a certain period, this cocoon opens up and there isn't a caterpillar inside, but rather a moth emerges. This being has physically changed. But why? Now, we know it didn't evolve since the definition of evolving requires generations of change. However, these beings are changing. We can visually see that this being is changing shape, color, and mobility. We can even see this in their diet. They go from these little tiny uh, leaf-eating mouths into nectar-sucking proboscis. But what drives this change? How do they know that it's time to change? What pushes this little creature to come out as a, of its home as a new creature with new physical characteristics? Let's shift and talk about other types of changes. This book, Why We Love, by Helen Fisher, goes in depth into the nature and chemistry of romantic love. Its goal is to answer the question, what is love? By looking at previous studies, literature, and Helen Fisher's very own research on love. In this book, there is a section that states, we establish that as a relationship lengthens, brain regions associated with me emotions, memory, and attention begin to respond in new ways. So, with longer relationships, our emotions, memory, and attention begin to respond in new ways, but why? Researchers still don't know why, and they're still trying to figure that out, but our brains are changing, and we are not in control. And I'm not sure if there's anything we can do to stop or reduce these effects. With longer relationships, our brain regions associated with emotions, attention, and memory undergo change without us knowing. So our brains working differently when we're in love. Is this a physical, metaphorical, or ideological change? Our lives change from moving locations into moving into new opportunities. But with our lives changing, do we change with it? We're physically moving, but are we undergoing change? We have addressed different types of changes. We have physical change, like the way a moth changes, and we have cognitive change, like the way our brain regions react differently in longer relationships. However, throughout all this change, what remains once the situation passes by? To expand on this, let's define a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without undergoing any permanent chemical change. A catalyst goes through a chemical reaction but comes out of that reaction with no permanent change. It stays the same. What is the equivalent to a catalyst in ourselves? When we undergo change, what stays the same? What is the one constant thing that does not get altered? We previously learned that our brain regions can change when being in love. We also know we physically change. Considering this, what's the catalyst when we go through change? After pondering on this question for some time, it came to me. The only constant in life is how you feed into what drives your physical self to push forward. Most of the time, change is hard. That doesn't mean it's good or bad. 
It's just hard to adjust. As humans, we like the preservation of sameness. We like consistency. It makes us feel secure. But when things change, they disrupt that cycle of sameness. They disrupt that consistency. What do we do when there's too much change to handle? What do we do when that cycle's disrupted? Time keeps moving, regardless of your adjustment to change. The only thing we can do is work with time and feed into what drives our motivation. We can't wait for time, so we must work with it. As much as I'd like to sleep in a cave and bury myself, there's won't do much but let time slip by. Therefore, when things get hard, one must find what feeds into what physically drives you, what physically moves you. To work with change, we must maintain our ability to physically work. We can't really do much without our physical self. We can have the most unique, world-changing ideas, but that's not really much when you're not physically acting on it. To be able to keep moving and pushing forth into any situation, one must find the simplest things that get you going. I'm not talking about what drives you. Personally, what drives me is my baby brother, Johnny. He is the reason I'm here today. He teaches me that no matter how many harsh changes we may have, we're still here. We still have the ability to push forward. However, like I said, I was not talking about what drives you. I'm talking about what feeds you to physically keep going. We can all have ideologies of what drives our voice, but we can't really do much without physically acting on it. We need to find what keeps us moving physically, whether that be getting coffee, an energy drink, or seeing the people you love around you. But how do we get from point A to point B physically? We have to be able to put one foot in front of the other and keep going, even if things are hard. That doesn't mean disregarding how stressful life is. It changes hard. However, being able to get yourself somewhere physically, you feel at peace, for example, the beach, for a small escape of change does wonders. Maintaining the ability to keep pushing and physically move forward is the catalyst of change. Reaching your hand out and physically grabbing your car keys is a small physical movement that gets you slightly closer to the beach. Those small physical movements that keep us moving remain the same when one undergoes change. Although sometimes it is hard to get out of bed, rolling from one side to another gets us slightly closer out of bed. These slight movements get us slightly closer to the next movement. Change is inescapable, and change will always occur. And the only thing that keeps us, the only thing that remains once change occurs is our ability to physically move from one moment to the next. But who drives this change? Nothing happens without a an action. Remember physics? With every action, there is a reaction. Have you ever gone to the store to buy a six pack of sodas with those plastic circles around it? Well, if you don't cut open those circles, they can end up in the ocean around some animal, like seagulls, turtles, or even fish. This is a possibility, but it might not occur. Different situations can have drastically different impacts. Some may be big, like cutting down entire forests. Others may be small, like reposting a small social justice event. However big your impact is, it gets you closer to your ultimate goal. The question is, what is your goal? What is your action that will have a reaction? By simply being able to move and breathe physically, you all have the ability to create change. It doesn't matter how big or small your movement is, with every action, we create a reaction. You are capable of initiating change in the world. The only wrong action is one that isn't made. So, what physically pushes you forward? To recap, what is change? Change is everything around us. When change occurs, the only thing left is our ability to physically move. By physically being able to move, we all have the ability to cause change. But let's not forget one thing. Change isn't good or bad. It's just hard to adjust to. Without, it, it's just hard to adjust to and takes time. Without time, that little caterpillar inside of you can't turn into a moth. So spread your wings and go create change. Me llamo Joana Saray Morales Lopez. Thank you.